Hi, welcome to the Bees Business or welcome back if you've been here before. Thank you for joining me in this video, which is part of my children's literature review series. Through this series, I hope to help fellow educators and parents find titles in children's literature that are inspirational, motivational, educational, or a combination of these. In order to keep my reviews consistent, I follow the same five, sometimes six step review process every time I review a text. The text that I'm reviewing for you today is called Grumpy Monkey by Suzanne Lang and illustrated by Max Lang. This is a book all about a little monkey, Jim Pansy, who just feels plain grumpy. As he goes about his day, he notices that pretty much everything is making him feel grumpy. As he encounters many other characters throughout the story, he continues to feel grumpy, and the other characters try to make him feel better. They encourage him to smile or sing or swing with them and do all sorts of different activities, and Jim Pansy wants nothing to do with any of these activities. As Jim is encountering each of these other characters, he doesn't really seem to understand that he's feeling grumpy. So as the other characters in the text express concern for Jim, he doesn't seem to be interpreting it as concern, and instead it's further frustrating him because he doesn't realize yet that he's grumpy. After listening to the suggestions of lots of other characters in the story, Jim reaches his snapping point. And at the moment when Jim snaps, he beats upon his chest and shouts, I'm not grumpy. And as the reader, we know that the opposite is true and he's actually quite grumpy. As we continue to read, we learn that Jim felt sorry. A little sorry for shouting at everyone, but mostly sorry for himself. I guess I am grumpy, Jim sighed. And just as he was starting to feel really sad, he came upon Norman. So after reaching his breaking point and doing a little bit of shouting at the other characters in the book, Jim realizes that he is indeed grumpy. After making the realization that he's grumpy, Jim goes on to meet Norman again, another character that we previously met in the story, and Norman is feeling a little bit grumpy now as well. He'd got some porcupine quills in his body and those are making him feel uncomfortable. Jim asks Norman if he's okay. Norman replies, it hurts, but I'll probably feel better soon enough. And then Norman asks Jim, are you still grumpy? Yes, said Jim, but I'll probably feel better soon enough too. For now, I need to be grumpy. It's a wonderful day to be grumpy, said Norman. Jim agreed, and he already felt a little bit better. So in the end of the story, it took Jim realizing that he was grumpy, finding a friend who was also feeling grumpy, talking out their feelings, and really just accepting that he feels grumpy and having someone else accept that he is grumpy, and that being okay. And with the pressure gone to make himself smile and act as though he's not being grumpy, Jim is able to just feel his feelings, have them validated, and that is already making him feel a little bit better. This story is encouraging children to just feel what they feel, to not focus so much on what others think they should feel, and to feel confident that it is okay for them to feel the emotions that they are feeling, and if the emotions they are feeling are negative ones, in time they will feel better. I enjoy the playful way that the author approaches this subject. As the reader, we start to sense that playfulness in the very beginning of the text when we read the main character's name, Jim Pansy, which of course is a play on the name Chimpanzee. The characters throughout the story behave much like friends typically would, trying to encourage Jim to feel better and offering suggestions of how he can improve his mood. But what his friends seem to be missing is that Jim doesn't even realize he's grumpy and he needs to just settle with his own feelings before he can do anything about them. The author has a nice gentle way of leading the reader to the major message of the story. And the overall playful nature of the text makes it an easy and fun read. When I read this story to my own children, they were doing a little bit of laughing as they watched Jim Pansy go about his day and listening to the way that he talked to his friends and watching the way that his physical reactions played out. And just from the very cover of the book, we are intrigued. This is a pretty grouchy looking face. I feel like while the cover of this text is not inviting us in like some other stories, it is making us feel curious, which makes us want to crack it open and read the pages that follow. My favorite thing about this text is that at the end, the story leaves us off with Jim and Norman spending some time together, but both feeling a little bit grumpy for a couple of different reasons. And instead of the story ending in a whimsically wonderful way where everything is perfect, we are exposed to a much more realistic ending. A goal in reading texts to our children is that they're going to learn something from the text, it's going to 
spark something in their imagination or it's going to help them through feelings that they're having. And so when a text is realistic, it's actually serving one of those purposes. If this text had ended in a way where Jim was feeling so much better and he was smiley and happy, while that would be good on the surface, what would it be teaching our readers? It would be teaching them that we expect them to get over their feelings quickly. Personally, having spent a lot of time with a variety of ages of children, both as a teacher and a mom, it is very clear to me that sometimes children are going to be feeling a certain way, they're not going to know why they're feeling that way, and they're not going to be ready to move on from those feelings with the snap of a finger. And instead, just letting them sit with their emotions and validating their emotions is way more powerful than trying to push them to feel differently than they do. And I feel like this text is encouraging just that. Feel your feelings and go about working through them at your own pace and in your own way. Appreciate if others offer advice to you, but know that you don't have to take that advice and that advice does not need to sit with you as a type of pressure to make you move through your feelings more quickly. We need to remind our littlest people in this world that their feelings are valid. As adults, I think something that we lose sight of when we are interacting with children is that concept of validating their emotions. As adults, we're dealing with situations and struggles that are much grander than that which children are typically encountering and experiencing. And if we are too quick to react and judge, we can minimize the feelings of a child by deeming them not important enough for them to be feeling upset about, or not serious enough. And we can do some damage by pushing children to move through their emotions too quickly and not actually fully process them. Instead, a piece of advice that I have is to meet children where they're at, validate their feelings. Even if in your world as an adult, whatever they are feeling seems silly and superficial, to them it matters. And validating their emotions is going to be extremely powerful for them. And actually through that validation, they are likely to move on from those frustrated or negative emotions much more quickly. So looping this back around to the story, I think this is a great book for both parents and children because it's reminding both of us the importance of feeling our feelings. And it's also reminding parents of the importance of letting children feel their feelings, even if to us they seem silly or superficial. In the end, Jim Panzi is feeling better, but the reason he's feeling better is because he encountered someone who's finally just willing to let him feel what he feels, and someone who's not trying to push him to feel differently than he feels. I also love that the author sets the scene that everything about this day, when Jim Panzi wakes up, is seemingly wonderful. It's a sunny day, but to him it's too bright, the bananas are too sweet, and he's just grumpy. But on the surface, there's no real reason as to why he should be grumpy. And how realistic is that? How often do we encounter a child who's grumpy and there really is no reason as to why. We're looking at their day and how it started and the information that they're giving us and we're thinking, that sounds like a great start to the day. Why are you feeling grumpy? But that's just it. Sometimes children truly don't know why they're grumpy. And you know what? That applies to us too as adults. I definitely have days where I don't have any idea why I'm grumpy, but I am. And that's okay. It's okay for children and it's okay for adults too. We can feel grumpy or any other array of feelings and not know why, and that's okay. Overall, I really love this text. I love the message that it is conveying to readers, both young and old, and you probably will not be surprised at my rating of a 10 out of 10. I think Suzanne Lang takes a potentially challenging topic, puts a playful spin on it, and ultimately produces a really realistic and meaningful message. I have no constructive criticism for this text. I feel like it is well written and flows in a natural, realistic fashion. And the illustrations do a great job of accompanying the language in the text. This book is a great read and I definitely recommend you read it with your own children or students. Because even if you read it on a day when they're not grumpy, there is sure to be a day when they are feeling grumpy and just don't know why. And hopefully when that day comes, they will think about Jim Pansy and remember, it's okay if I feel grumpy, and it's also okay if I don't know why. I lost my outro footage for this video, but thank you for joining me on this review, which is part of my children's literature review series. I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye!